clever things about Concorde. Uh, there's no such thing as a supersonic engine. Whilst the aircraft travels along at 1,350 miles an hour, just above Mark II, the engine will only accept air at 0.4 mark. So I don't think you see a red dotted line on the side of the intake. Yeah. The engine is there and aft. Forward of that red dotted line is the intake. All that is the hole. But we use that hole to slow the air down from Mark II at the front face of the intake to Mark 0.4 at the front face of the engine. And that's achieved by the ramp doors at the top, they come down to produce a convergent divergent duct, venturi. That slows the air down, but it also increases the pressure and increases the temperature of that air. And to be a heat compression engine, the engine likes that. So that Mark II crews get off 50% of the power of the aircraft is developed through the intakes through that compression ratio. So Mark II, half the power of the aircraft is gained without burning fuel. But to get to Mark II, we've got a reheat system. Now the engines at full power use about 10 tonnes of fuel an hour each. You put the reheat in, that gives you an extra 20% power, but it doubles the fuel burn. So reheat's used for takeoff and then again for transonic acceleration for a long period. But once it gets up to about Mark 1.7, the intake's delivering sufficient power that can turn the reheats off. That's something the Russians and Americans couldn't get right, but the British and French did. Blackbird has to run its reheats all the time, it's R71, as is the 2 block 144. This aircraft's got the range it's got, and it's got the efficiency it's got because of those intakes. This pressure void sends up the intake roof, which sends the uh, first shock wave into the intake. Clever part of that one. And at the top of this set, the aircraft wants to slow down. This door here will come over and it will dump air underneath the lines of the meter. So we have to be a little bit careful of the uh, oil on the floor. Um, Supersonic aircraft leaving. Yeah, so, second across the verses, um, they're at 21 degrees now, which is a subsonic position. Um, they go to zero for supersonic flight and they do close fully for thrust reverse. The reason they're at 21 is the noise abatement. Um, on Concorde, all the air goes through the core of the engine, all that's heated. Um, other than like subsonics, where 80% of the air is bypassed. We keep it at 21 degrees, so some tertiary air can come over the top and underneath and cool the air and make it quieter. Uh, there's a small tail wheel at the back, just in case they over-rotate after on takeoff or landing. Um, don't use that with a <laughs> Flying control surface, there's two rudders. There's no horizontal stabiliser, the have got. Um, but it has got six elevons on the back of each to the kitchen roll control. Yeah, it's 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 small, is it? Is it it's 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 no, no, it's, it's been there. I don't think we've ever replaced one. <laughs> we've been repaired a few of them. When you've been busy, we've never taken off. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, the terror is never touched. Well. <laughs> yeah. This aircraft has actually got no seats inside it, but it has. It's got um, five of each of the new seats. We've actually been using some trial seats in this. Um, we're going to put new seats before we go and practice the flying yet. We've actually got two different types of seats on this aircraft. We're doing it as bump testing. We've got trolleys up there, we've bumped trolleys into the seats deliberately <laughs> just to see whether they uh, stand up to it. We've got one with a Kevlar arm resting on the helmet. The, does it spin up into, into that section? Yeah, this is the wheel for a hit. The problem is the round of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, in Paris, there's a length, a lump of titanium steel, which was sitting at 90 degrees to the runway. Oh, okay. The tyre ran over that piece of titanium steel, cut it, went rotating around it, took a chunk out there, about A4 size, which flew up, hit the lower surface of a wing, buckled the lower surface of a wing, penetrated it, buckled the lower surface of a wing, 
fuel tank was full of fuel, the aircraft was accelerating, so all the fuel was at the back of the tank, there was no airspace above that fuel. There was a hydraulic magnification effect, hydraulic shockwave within the tank, and somewhere at the thinner part of the tank, it ruptured out. The fuel came out, it circulated in the undercarriage bay, it's acted as a furnace. There's a probability that the loom up there was damaged, can't do it. Um, three phase brake fan motors was in there, yeah. Yeah, at the top yeah. of that. The, Three fan, three phase, 200 volt brake fan motors occur so it's over that, and there's a thought that, that was sparking a spark up there, and that was the source of the ignition. Normally, the fuel would have just gone straight back, and it wouldn't have been the air, flow, air fuel mixture to ignite. But because it was circulating up there, unfortunately, that did happen. And that's an awful lot of fuel. There's a lot of fuel coming out. Yeah. God. There's two ground tests that we need doing away from Heathrow before we go flying in. One is a fuel ingestion test, so we've got an engine that's room in S and then pour fuel into it to see what volume is. What volume is. Sort of what's happened here.